Welcome back to The Daily Quack. Today we are looking at what just might be my all-time favorite 10-pager, the Northeaster on Cape Quack from Walt Disney's Comics and Stories number 256 from January 1962. On a blustery winter day, Donald and the boys are admiring the old lighthouse on Cape Quack. It's been a fixture of Duckburg for decades, guiding in a number of ships and even surviving the legendary Northeaster of 97 when the waves reached all the way up to the gallery platform. Unbeknownst to the ducks, there is someone who doesn't share their positive views of the lighthouse. The villain of the story, known only as Chief, sees the lighthouse as an ancient relic whose time has passed and wants to demolish the signal light and build a gun club on the site. With a once in a lifetime storm bearing down on them, the lighthouse keeper leaves the ducks temporarily in charge as he goes to move his belongings to higher and drier ground. While he's gone, the villain, thinking the lighthouse is vacant, decides that now is a good time to destroy the light. His hope is that it would be too expensive to fix and he'd be able to get his hands on the land. His destruction is halted by Donald and the boys, but it's too late. The damage is done. As giant waves batter the lighthouse, they realize one of the ships trying to reach Duckburg Harbor has lost its radar and needs the guiding light to bring it safely in. And to make matters worse, the ship is bringing in the town Christmas tree and Christmas baskets for the children of Duckburg. The ducks need to get the signal burning again, but without electricity, it's a formidable task. They discover some old oil lanterns in the storage room, and after lighting them, Donald takes them to the highest point in the lighthouse as waves crash over. The stricken ship sees the guide lights in the nick of time, and both Christmas and the lighthouse are saved. As I said earlier, this is one of my favorite Barks duck stories. I've always loved lighthouses and stormy weather, so this has a perfect combination of both. This is a story from the 1960s, but it just as easily could be written today as it deals with some people romanticizing the past as others try to sweep it away for their own personal gains. And this story perfectly illustrates why Bark's work just can't be categorized as just for children. When you compare Bark's work with the other stories in Walt Disney's comics and stories, the contrast is incredible. Yes, Bark's stories are for kids, but they are also for people of all ages. I can find his stories entertaining and enjoyable today, and I'm in my 50s. Compare this to the other stories in the issue. A Ludwig von Drake tale, a one-page Mickey Mouse story, a five-page Little Bad Wolf story, and part two of Mickey Mouse and the Mystery of Misery Mesa. I'm not trying to disparage anyone's work, but both the artwork and writing for all these stories just feel so childish and simple. I do like the artwork in the Mickey story, but the writing just can't compare to Barks. Even as a kid, I'd only read the Donald Duck story and usually the Mickey Mouse one too, but that would be it. Anyway, that's my take on Northeaster on Cape Quack. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.